Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone this video i am going to talk about immunoglobulins immunoglobulins are also plasma proteins and they are commonly called as the antibodies they function as immune defense mechanism in the blood synthesized by plasma cells and derived from B lymphocytes. Every immunoglobulin molecule is made up of four chains, two light chains either of kappa type or lambda type, but they are never a mixture of the two. In one immunoglobulin molecule, we cannot have one kappa type of light chain and one lambda type of light chain. Both of them should be either kappa or lambda. Then there will be two heavy chains which are denoted by a capital H and these heavy chains are of five different types. Immunoglobulins are classified into five different types based on the heavy chain they contain. So, this is a structure of immunoglobulin. The lines which are drawn in black which are to the left and to the right of the molecule. You can see that I have indicated the amino terminus the other end is the carboxy terminus. The black lines represent the heavy chains and there are some SS bridge like structures which are drawn all over the molecule. These are the disulfide bridges which help to keep the shape of the molecule. The lines which are drawn in brown, there are two of them, both of them are the light chain of the immunoglobulin. So, in one immunoglobulin we have four chains, two heavy chains may be any of the G, A, M, D or E type and two kappa chains or two lambda chains. So, totally we have only four chains in a immunoglobulin molecule. So, this is the general structure of the immunoglobulin. In between the heavy chain and the light chain also you see some SS bonds. These are the again the disulfide bonds. These are the intra chain dis interchain sorry interchain disulfide bonds which link the heavy chain with the light chain. We have interchain disulfide bond in the hinge region between the two heavy chain molecules. So, there are a number of ways by which the immunoglobulin structure is stabilized. This is required because the immunoglobulin is traversing the blood, passing through the blood at high speed as the blood is being pumped by the heart. So, if it loses its structure, it ceases to bind any antigen. Its job is to get hold of antigens and bind them and finally, allow their destruction. So, the five immunoglobulin types are the IgG made up of two gamma heavy chains. So, gamma is a Greek letter represented like that and IgA two alpha heavy chains. IgM to mu heavy chains, IgD made up of two delta heavy chains and IgE made up of two epsilon heavy chains. The light chains and heavy chains as I mentioned earlier are joined by disulfide bridges. 
the disulfide bonds are also seen within the light chain and within a heavy chain. Now, look at the structure of immunoglobulin once again. Now, we see some new terminologies written there. What is this V H, C H, C H 2, C H 3 and so on. These are the domains of the light and the heavy chains. V L represents variable region of the light chain, C L represents the constant region of the light chain. Similarly, in the heavy chain we have four domains variable heavy chain, constant heavy chain 1, constant heavy chain 2, constant heavy chain 3. These are the domains of the heavy chain. Now, if we want to cut the immunoglobulin into pieces and study them, we can use two enzymes. One is called papain. The papain cleavage site is indicated with a red arrow. So, on either side the papain can cut producing a fragment which contains the entire light chain and two domains of the heavy chain that is the VH and the CH1. So, one piece like this on the right side and another piece like this on the left side indicated by two red arrows. So, papain cleavage produces two antigen binding fragments on one on the right and one on the left of the structure and one fragment which is the lower part which is called the crystallizable fragment abbreviated as FC. So, papain cleavage produces three pieces of the immunoglobulin molecule. So, this papain cleavage happens above the hinge region of the immunoglobulin molecule. The hinge region is the one which has disulfide bonds connecting the two heavy chains. So, above the hinge region when the cleavage happens we get three pieces of the immunoglobulin. If we use another enzyme called pepsin, pepsin as you know is a digestive enzyme which is found in gastric juice. So, pepsin if it cleaves the immunoglobulin, it is going to cleave below the hinge region and we are going to get only two pieces of the immunoglobulin molecule. So, one piece containing two FABs linked together and another piece below the hinge region which contains only the CH2 and CH3 domains of the immunoglobulin. So, pepsin cleavage we will get only two pieces from the immunoglobulin molecule. So, where do the antigens bind? The whole purpose of having immunoglobulins in blood is to bind to antigens which might have been contributed by any virus or bacteria. So, the immunoglobulin will bind to the antigen at regions which are indicated in purple globules. So, two antigens can be bound by one immunoglobulin molecule and this antigen binding site is made up of the V L and the V H of the immunoglobulin. So, we have explained all this already. Now, what are the functions of immunoglobulins? IgG is the highest concentration in plasma. It protects the extra vascular tissue spaces. So, it can move from the blood into the interstitial space and neutralizes bacterial toxins diffuses into interstitial space because of the small size and it is the secondary response to antigen and it can also activate the complement system and it is the only immunoglobulin which can be transferred across the placenta from the mother to the fetus. 
IgA protects the mucosal surfaces. Wherever there are mucosal membrane, wherever there are secretions, there is IgA present in the secretion. For example, in the intestinal secretions, respiratory secretion, in the tears, in the saliva and in the colostrum. In the colostrum, it is highest in concentration. And the secretory form of IgA is dimeric. What is in the blood is monomeric but when it is secreted, it is dimeric which means that there are two immunoglobulin molecules attached to each other in the secretory form. It also can activate complement. Placental transfer is not possible. IgG is the only one which can be transferred across the placenta. IgM is pentameric in structure. It is the largest immunoglobulin molecule. It is the primary response to antigen and it lyses the bacteria. It protects the blood stream and it is the first Ig synthesized in the fetus. It is largest in size and restricted to the blood because of this and activates the complement. Placental transfer again is not possible. IgE binds to mast cells and to basophils. It is involved in immediate hypersensitivity reactions and IgD is expressed on B lymphocytes. Its function however is not known. it does not activate complement. Thank you friends. So, that is all in this video. I hope you understood the structure and function of immunoglobulins. Thank you.